are less important than us. We become arrogant, radiating a stage of superiority of the rich over the poor. Earthly wealth doesn't measure a person's character. On a spiritual level, the rich and the poor are both justified equally in Christ. That is where everyone gets their eternal worth and that's the only place it matters. Father, with of whatever we have blessed me, I pray you keep my heart humble. I recognize my money does not make me superior to those who have less. Amen. Your next step. There are multitudes uh, whose life is nothing but a continuous lottery, who are always within a few months of plenty and happiness, and how often so ever they are marked with blanks except a prize from the next as adventure. If I told you I could push a button right now and transfer a million dollars to your bank account, how many of you would feel a, like better, a little better? You are probably thinking, wow, I could deal with that. I could do this. I could go there. Life would be better if Pete gave me a million dollars. I know I would like, uh, like it if I gave me a million bucks. That just shows our tendency to put our it can't deliver. All I had to do was uh, tell you I am giving you a million dollars and you forgot. Here's the daily reminder. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor uh, to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. Don't put your hope in wealth. It's uncertain and won't be able to fulfill your needs indefinitely. I have got an app on my iPad I check to see what our various financial accounts are doing. It goes up and down and up and down on the wheel of a few people on Wall Street. While I am thankful for the money and what, I, uh, what it allows for my family, I hate watching it fluke, uh, fluctuate in ways I have no control over. That app should be a constant reminder. But to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Where wealth is fleeting, slippery, and weak, God is constant, solid, and sturdy. sturdy. True security and stability is found in Christ. He promises in His Word that He will never forsake you. That all you have to do is reach for him and he, he, he will catch you. The next step is yours. Will you take it? Even if Father God and Jesus, thank you for being constant in my life. I put my trust in you because you will never abandon me. Amen. Needing your love into life. No one has ever become poor by giving. We are constantly bombarded in today's culture to spend our money on things we deserve. But God doesn't necessarily see money as a tool to bless ourselves. He sees money as our tool to bless others. John Calvin once said, a man's opportunity to do good for others increase with the abundance of his riches. As God gives you more naturally, you have more opportunity to do good in people's lives. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God 
who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. If you are above the American poverty line, you are rich in this present world. And even giving just a little goes a very long way. Compassion International offers the opportunity for people to feed, clothe, and educate poverty-stricken kids for $38 each month. World Vision has a program where you can provide a small business loans to families so they can get the supplies and equipment they need to provide long term of their basic need. God pours blessings and gives into our lives so we can be blessings to others. Paul just comes out and says, be generous and willing to share. But it doesn't end there. Generosity is God's way to bless us. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. God is reaching out right now, offering a different way to live. The result is a freedom and satisfaction that cannot be matched by anything you could buy. Are you ready to take hold of that which is truly life? God set my priorities straight. Make my heart compassionate and loving like yours. Today, show me one special place where the money you have entrusted to me can be a blessing to someone else. I thank you ahead of time for the opportunity to be used in this way. Amen. The fight for your heart. Patrick Perchik. Money is the world's curse. Tevye. May the Lord smite me with it, and may I never recover. I think we can all agree that whenever there is a conflict, it's over something seen as valuable. Sure, sometimes we fight for bragging rights or for mastery of a specific skill, like chess or boxing. Far more often, we complete over things or ideas that are more valuable than that. Jesus and Satan know what's most valuable in us. They fight for our hearts. Jesus is the best thing for us. In him, we are complete. Satan needs to pull us away from them. So he uses materialism to distract us. As we take Satan's materialist bait, our hearts begin to covet things that don't last, which pulls us into the trap. Satan's victory over our souls becomes more and more powerful the more we place our value in the value of our stuff. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. We already have life because we have Christ, but we can't waste our wealth completely on ourselves. When spending our fortune, avoid arrogance, transfer hope, give generous, generously. You will experience blessing here and you will store up treasure there. The conflict and completion, competition for your heart continues today. Who will win? Spirit, I know that whatever wealth I 
Better have doesn't make me better or worse than those with less or more. Show me where you want me to pour your, myself and my resources into so that the spiritual wealth abounds in many people. Amen. Open your eyes. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. A friend of mine named Bill once took his family to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico on vacation. One night they, tr they hired a taxi to take them out to eat. The driver asked if he could come back and pick them up later, so they agreed. After dinner, Bill asked him to bear in broken Spanish how many kids he had. The driver rep uh, replied, Cuatro. Bill then asked how old they were. The driver replied, Cuatro. How about the other ones? Cuatro. At first, we thought the driver misunderstood. They went around and around until all of a sudden he realized the man had quadruplets. Bill, never having seen quadruplets, asked if they could take this man and his family out for dinner. The next day, as the driver and his wife uh, filled into the local McDonald's, Bill and his wife's hearts broke when they saw the last two boys. Their eyes were terribly crossed and they couldn't walk as a result. After a little digging, digging Bill learned there was a surgery that could fix the little boy's eyes, but a very small window of time was left for it to be done. The problem? The driver only made $10 per day. They were, there was no way they could afford the surgery. So God moved the hearts of Bill and his family. They looked into it and found the doctor who could perform the surgery. After the kids went through the surgery, both boys' eyes were perfectly straight and they began learning how to walk. God gave Bill and his family eyes to see the need that was around them. What an awesome way to view the world. Imagine the difference we can make as Christ expresses his life through us. After all, miracles happen when people step out in faith in Him. Will you? Holy Spirit, I think my eyes are the ones that are crossed. I am that one who cannot walk freely as you intended. Correct my vision. I believe that you will bless me as I allow you to bless others through me. I believe that I will be storing up treasure in heaven. Amen. Hope for something better, a better and life-giving way. Early Jewish believers had a struggle. They had a hard time staying focused on Jesus because they couldn't take their eyes off their earthly hero Moses. Some of us might have that same struggle today with the people we hold in high esteem. The Bible encourages you to reflect on who is influencing you. Are you allowing Jesus, the endeavoring Christ, to impact your life or someone else. Helpful very source. Many of many of us have come to the realization that the upcoming holiday season will likely look different this year. But perhaps the meaning of Christmas 2020 will be even more poignant 
poignant than in years past because while we wrestle with ongoing uncertainty we know that, that our Lord walks with us and he is our unshakable hope and why our hearts can rejoice. Drop in your guard with Jesus, clouds make the man, naked people have little or no influence on society. It's the classic nightmare. Imagine you are in the middle of the middle of Times Square, completely naked, feels terrifying, right? That shame and that drive to get out of here is the natural reaction you have when you recognize your unrighteousness before God. Because God is good, I must hide from Him because I am not. This was the natural reaction of Adam and Eve. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. When you are spiritually naked, you feel the gaze and the stare of God and others with nowhere to hide. The natural human response is to cover up. We immerse ourselves in our world. We get really religious. We try to raise kids who behave in public. We try to get rid of the classic outward sins and we really tend to judge others. Fig leaves can sometimes protect us from judgment by other human beings, but they come with a price if we try to hide our sin from God, who is the only one who can redeem us from the fall. But now, apart from the Lord, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the Lord and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jewish and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came from by Christ Jesus. Fig leaves deny this reality and rob you of intimacy with God. But Jesus makes that intimacy always available, no matter how exposed your sin makes you feel. Jesus, how foolish I am to try to hide behind fig leaves when you know it all anyway, and you forgive and love me always. I drop my guard before you I, now. I praise you for your grace. Thank you, thank you for fully embracing me just the way I am. Amen. Amen.